Okay, so good morning, class. Today's class will be around the uh, principal principal books. We call it the ledger account. That's what we call it. So I uh, from the last class, my other colleague took um took the uh, classes around source documents, and I'm sure if you are if you are familiar with your source document and everything that was taken in the class. You won't be having much issues around um, the ledger account because the source document generally has invoices, we have receipts, we have um, we have payment slips, payment slips, we have credit notes, we have debit notes. So all of these are all what they are all source documents that have to be that have an account. We have to open an account or probably close them to a particular account. Say for example, something like invoices, mostly deals with sales day book, if you remember, and purchases day book and in the sales day book a sales day book is close to something we call a sales account then the purchase day book is close to something we call a purchase account and this applies to the receipts and payment slips applies generally to it applies to your these two applies to your cash book. Different, we have two, two column, we have column, like that, like that. Then your credit and debit notes apply generally to your, uh, what's it called, your debtors and your creditors account. So you find that all these your source documents are just there for collation, just like when I explained, I was explaining the introduction to account. They are there. So um to have your account, just like when I was explaining. Explaining well, you need your document to put together to bring out to bring about all of it. it already tells you from what this the last my colleague took the last so it tells you that we have usually around sales in sales always your sales day book that will be close to your sales account, then your purchases day book that will be close to your purchases account. So the same applies to receipt and payment slip. That goes, that works hand in hand with your what, with your cash book. So when we are doing your sales account and your credit, uh, your purchase account, I don't have. That's when you get extended to something we usually call your debtors and your what, your creditors account. When that credit note and the debit note applies, so that's just a glimpse of you are saying, oh, ledger at least to be on top of what you are expecting per time when it comes to a ledger account. So a ledger account, we all know, is um the usual we we all mention of all transactions in this. Source, you know, I, I said, like I said earlier, okay, let me just put it. I can't just, okay, the what is the fine of all transactions in. The, the subsidiary books, call it 
we also say subsidiary are what? Source documents, which my other colleague took the last time. Okay, let me just quick back to a recap of what this we have sales book. Oh my god, my this marker is not working fine. Okay, there's another one here. We, we have so your subsidiary books, you'll be looking at sales day book, purchases day book. I just see this as repeating what happened in the last class, but I feel we should, we should still do it at least to give us a recap of return inwards day book. We have return outwards. We have the cash book. And basically, those are just what we have for the subsidiary group. So the ledger account is the what is the final destination of these four: the sales day book, purchases day book, return inward, return outward, and your what and your cash book, because they've all arise, they all arise from what the source document, which I explained earlier. So let's go straight up, in order not to waste a lot of time on that, we need to go straight up into our types of ledger. So we have our, yeah, we have our ledger account to be divided into two major parts. We have the personal and the, okay, ledger account divided. Let me just use a, oh my God, what's this? So we have it to be, we have the ledger account to be personal and the in personal. Your personal account deals basically with individuals. Then this, the in personal deals with the non-individual. So when we mean when we when we say individual, what do we mean by individual? We talk about your creditors. We talk about your debtors. Anything that relates to a personal account. Anything relating to. Oh, I don't want to go far below below that. Anything relating to personal account. Let me just say personal account. This is this is something else today. I just hope this won't slow us down a bit because we have a lot to cover. So anything that is relating to a personal account, personal uh, personal ledger does not have issues most of the time because we already know they are relating most especially to the creditors, your debtors, and um, Fair, the, any any individual, but I add that's what your personal account is. Then let's go deep into your in personal account because we have different branches for that. We could not just conclude. So for your in personal accounts, we have nominal. Because as much as possible, I want to make this class as simple as like when we are going through anything else, aside that one, aside, you don't have to like, by the time you be going through your text, you will have a glimpse of what you should be seeing and not just anything. So your nominal account generally uh, relates to your income and expenses account. Income and expenses. So expenses, income, name it, they are, the, they are the ledgers you find on that nominal. You know, I already explained your ledger to be personal and impersonal. Then your impersonal account, the, your personal account is generally with what? With individuals and nothing more. But your impersonal account is subdivided into nominal, real, uh, nominal and real accounts. So your no, nominal part is your income and expenses why your real account is your asset. Your asset and um, liabilities. 
but let's just leave it as just asset for now. So when we were looking at um, the impersonal account and we understood the fact that it's just your nominal and the real, your, uh, the nominal is divided into the income and expenses. Then the real account is basically your assets. Here is the thing when it comes to ledger accounts. And as much as possible, I want to make it very simple in a way that will be very, very, very comprehensive. The, here is our rules of postings. We say double entry is you debit. What do you debit again? Or in Kosala, what do you debit? It? What do you debit when it comes to your ledger accounts? I'll slap you. What do you debit? Because you are the class here. So that every other, other person would know there's a class going on. So under your ledger account, we said the debit. Debit, debit. debit the what? Receiver. The receiver. And debit. Credit the giver. Credit the giver. Okay, this is the general rule of accounting generally. You say you debit your receiver and you credit your yeah. giver. Well, the ledger account is far gone beyond that. I will just put it that way. But at the end of the day, you'll find out that you're still debiting the receiver and you're, great, you're crediting your giver. But in this case, I would like us to look at, for ledger account, as much as possible, I don't just want us to work with the rules of you give debit the giver, credit to the receiver. This is my major part. I, by the time this class ends, I want us to look back and, and, and have a single landing so that going forward, even when you use your text, it will make more sense. Now we have five elements of account. The element of account is just five. And I tell you, if you are going to deal with any of these ledgers, these five elements will all, you will always find your ledgers are below these five elements. Because regardless of how it is, by the time we start with the five elements, when we are dealing with this ledger, and we explain more about each of them, you understand why you debit your giver and you credit your receiver. First thing first, we have capital as your first element of account. We have the assets, we have the liability, we have the income and we have the expenses. Believe you me, in any, in any account scenario, in any account situation, if you can understand these five elements of account, in debt and the side of account, each of these, and the ledger and, and the ledger account, each of these elements covers. I tell you, you will be fine in any account, in finding if when you find yourself in any account situation. So I will start, I will use my ledger account by, I will use this element of account to explain better my ledger account. So when you see them in any situation, you will be fine, you will be able to, you will find it very easy. So you find out that we are not just debiting the receiver and you're crediting the giver now, but at least you, you understand the concept behind debiting the receiver and crediting the giver. Now let's start in a very short form. Let, what do we understand by our capital? People say, what is your capital? The capital is your whatsoever resources you put together to start up a business. Yes, that's what it is. Resources to start up a business. To set up a business. And I tell you, a capital being the resources you use to set up a business in the ledger account will always have a what? A, a credit balance. And I'll, and I'll just put that to you. Why is it giving us a credit balance? So it means when, when as much as you're talking about a credit balance, we are looking at a ledger account that will say, well, each time we say capital, capital account, your balance brought forward will be on the credit side because your ledger account says credit here and your debit is here. 
So when you have a ledger account like this, your balance brought forward for this will be, your balance brought forward will always, you always have it as on your credit. Why? Now, if you look at this capital, it means that truly you are debiting the giver, the, the receiver, I am crediting the giver because at any point in time, capital is what? Capital is giving to the business. Whether you like it or yes, the resources is not coming back to the person that is giving it. It's giving what? To the business because regardless of it, you needed that resources to pull out, to, to pull out there and get more income for the business. So that's why you find out that every capital account we all would always have a what a credit balance. Now, so to talk about, let's let's talk about other elements under the capital account. We have uh, what was it called? We have your drawings. If you look at aside your capital, you look at your drawings, and you're opening a drawings account. That says this is your credit, this is your debit. Your balance will always be the balance brought forward for that credit for that drawings will always be what because we are debiting the receiver and we are crediting the giver because drawings you're withdrawing and this as much as capital is involved too is also the business is also taken from it in this case is the business the business is taken out and here is the proprietor or the owner of the business that is actually taken out. So this has explained and has actually convinced us about the, uh, was the element, the doctrine of debit the giver and credit the receiver. Aside that part, let's leave any other thing else. You, you, you should always have it at the back of your mind that your capital account is a credit balance. This is paramount. Whether you like it or yes, it is a credit balance. So when you think of your balance sheet, when you think of your uh, when you think of your trial balance, don't mix it up, sorry. When you think of your trial balance, you think of you always have it at the back of, my, of your mind that capital and other elements that belong to capital have a credit balance. So let's go, let's move up to your asset account as your element of accounts. Another part of element of account. Yeah, what has what's your asset? Hmm. I hope I will not end up. I will not. I will not end up defining assets in a way that is not supposed to do. Okay. Yes. So let's make it simple. So assets are the resources that the the business own. So we we'll call it resources owned by the business by the business to generate more income. Let me put it. Let me have that. So you'll find out that assets have resources owned by the organization, by the business to generate more income. It's actually a standard for that, but I'm not ready to bring it in so that it will not complicate things for everybody. So having this in mind, we, we should always have it at the back of our mind that assets are divided into two. We have the current assets and the non-current assets. I, I pray we will we'll be able to wrap this up before the time elapses so that we can have more explanation on, on what each of these elements of account is and what their ledger balances are. Because the moment you'll be able to get that, each time you always have, you, you know that when we talk about the principle of double entry, that says for every debit, debit entry, there must be a corresponding entry. Hey, debit entry, there must be a what? a corresponding credit entry. So, and I tell you by the time we'll be going through all the element of account, you are having a, 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 an edgeway for a particular element of account. Definitely you know where the other one is going. So in order to make this snappy, let's quickly rush into what the non-current and, uh, and the current asset is all about. So for non-current, We have tangible assets. 
when we say tangible assets, that those are the assets that would what that would last, that would last for more than twelve months period. When we look at these assets, we find out that they fall into your land and building because you cannot elapse your land and building over a year. You find out that they are under your property, your plant and machinery, They also fall under your furnitures and fittings. So if you look at this asset, there are all assets that remain, the non-current asset, they are all assets in your account that will last for more than a year. They're expected to, their lifespan is expected to last for over 12 months. That is usually five years, 10 years, depends on the type of asset. Now let's talk about the non-current asset. I'll just drop this part off. So the non-current asset, usually we all know they have your inventory. When we say inventory, what are inventories? Inventories are the stock you have in your company. The stocks that are running, that yeah, you use as, as if you're saying, if you say you sell, you sell groceries, your people will be looking at biscuits, but, uh, sorry, you sell groceries, then you sell groceries, looking at say salt, rice, beans, all of those things as your assets, as your inventory. But when biscuits, all this, you'll be looking at, um, what is it called? Uh, you'll be looking at provi uh, uh, milo, milk, sugar, and all of those as your inventory. Whatsoever you're selling, your inventory is that thing you are selling because either, regardless of how it is, they will always form part of your assets because yes, you've incurred cost on them. And whether you like it or not, you just have to like, you just have to recognize them as part of you, whatsoever you are doing. So we have your inventory. Then we have your, we, pay, we have cash, cash at hand. And we have cash in bank. We have something very, very important we call receivables, trade. Okay, let me put it here. We call it trade or account receivables. Ah, can you see me? Can somebody signify if they can see? Hello? Can you see what I'm doing? Yes, we can. Okay. So um, it's usually called trade or account receivables. So here is the thing. Actually, this whole thing, they have like a trench. It's just like a circle. Because something has led to the other and has led to the other like that, like that. And it just went like that. That's why we call it current asset because it changes its form within a year. In fact, sometimes within months. It can, within, within, two, within, within a month, it can change its form. And this is how the circle usually goes when it comes to current asset. You, the first thing you have is your inventory. Now, when you sell, when you sell your inventory and they pay, they make payments, you have your cash in hand or cash at bank. You can see how it's form, how the form is changing, why we call it current asset. But when payment is not made for non-payment, that's when you have your trade receivables, or we call it account receivables. So when this person pays, that's when we have the cash in hand or cash at bank. Cash in hand in the sense that if the person brings cash to make payment or the person decided to make payment via the bank. So you can see it's a circle, whether you like it or not. That's why we call it a current asset because it changes its form within a year, sometimes month, depends on how much sales you can make. Because this form, this form and its integral part 
of your cell. So in as much as you've not sold at the time, it will remain in this form as an inventory. But when you sell, it becomes your cash in hand or cash at bank. But when you're not selling, when you're selling on credit, this one, the, for non-payment, we call it sales on credit. We call it transactions on credit. That's when you have your account payables or trade, uh, account receivables or trade receivables. Please, sorry, pardon me for my, for the mixed up. So that's that for your current asset. Then there's another part of the current asset that does not really form part of this circle, but is expected to change its form within a year. And that part for current asset is, called, is what we call our prepayment. We call it prepayment. Sometimes it is called prepaid. Sometimes they call it pay, pay, uh, ad, uh, paid in advance. So usually they are all they are. They, it relates more to expenses that expenses in the business that does not really form part of it. It's not the ordinary cost of the business, but regardless of how it is. They, they are still part of it. Payments made in, uh, they, they are usually like, they are like uh, your electricity now. Take for example, you need electricity to run your business. It's not the cost of, it's not the major cost of the business. So at the end of the day, when you feel, ah, instead of uh, NEPA, NEPA to come, you know, that's why we have all these prepayment bills. So I'm, I'm very sure people don't even understand why they call this prepayment bill. Because regardless of how it is, you pay 500 Naira ahead ahead of time and what you are using for that month is just maybe say 100 naira so where, where are you going to keep the other 400 the other 400 this is what is what your current charge at that time then this one is what we call prepaid because these expenses has been incurred whether you like it or not but it will still for it will form part of your your assets because you are yet to consume it is looking like is look is the money that is sitting somewhere in another form. So in a nutshell, I think that that's just that about your current your assets. In order not to go too in depth and omit the rest of the other element of account that we are using to explain our ledger account. In a nutshell, all asset accounts, all assets, the one we divided between your non-current and the current. They have they have a what a debit balances. Please, we need to note all of these things. So when we say they have a debit balance, I've been explaining your non-current asset and your current asset. You should be able to you should be able to uh, link each of these or each of these those elements when you are dealing with them. You know they are they all have what a debit balance. When I mean they have a debit balance, it means when you are now opening an account, take for example, you are opening an account for plant and machinery. You have your credit and you have your debit. Then you are looking at balance brought forward. As uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm so sorry. So you are looking at your balance brought forward as your debit item. The same thing goes for your inventory, be it inventory, let me just clean this up. If, it, if it's your inventory, you find out that that's how, that's why you always have a debit balance for your inventory. And the one that will shock you most is now your what? Your cash or your cash account. So you find out that that's why we always have a debit balances for each of these things because you always start with the debit and your credit so everything that they are receiving at any point in time will be debited and whatever they are giving out will be will be what will be credited as an asset asset is the resources you you, you incur and you in the business own so at any point in time is always receiving so yeah, that's why we have our asset accounts to be what debit to have a debit balance and i i'm very sure we can have this synced somewhere in our mind so going forward when we see all of this uh, when we see the uh, the other components when we see a component under the asset account 
uh, classified under non current and current account uh, under the asset account classified under non current and the current asset you will be able to you be sure able to like conclude that okay yes according to one lesson i went through we're told that all assets have a debit balance so you want to be going back and forth and be asking yourself ah, what am i debiting what am i crediting no mm -mm. in as much as it has a debit balance from the or from the onset so in anything that is coming into it will be debited and anything that is moving out of that account will be credited that's the rationale behind debit the giver and credit the debit the receiver and credit the giver sorry for the mixed up so the liability now so the liability we know is they are the obligations the company has to make as and where they are the obligations of the business at any point in time. Or we can say obligations that have to be met, obligations to be met. as they do, as they fall due. You know, liability generally, people will just use the term liability, liability. Liability generally is called BC. Whether we like it or not, it is just one form of BC or the other. If you are receiving loan, if you are collecting loan, the moment you started collecting loan, just know that you have started incurring BC. So whether you like it or yes, Liability is always the best thing, just like it's, it's, we, we specify here, obligations of the, of, business, of the business at any point in time. So they are there and whether you like, whether the business likes it or not, they are, they are to be met as at when they fall due. So the moment they are falling due, you just won't have a choice than to what, than to start incurring them. So, the liabilities can actually be divided into non-current and the what the current. So the non-current falls under most of the times the loan, the yeah, we call it sometimes they call it the venture. Some calls it uh, what type of loan again? Anything, any non current liability and uh, any non current liability are obligations that are meant to last. They are obligations that are to be last, that, that is meant to be, they are to be met, obligations to be met over a year. But for non current, they are obligations that has to be met. That has to be met within a year. So here, the examples we have in this case is our bank overdraft. Then what do we call a bank overdraft? Before we'll be able to convince ourselves, yes, truly, the obligations are to be met in a year. When you have a particular balance in your account, you say in your account, your bank, your bank manager. I mean, your account officer told you that you have just 1,000 here. And at the end of the day, you, you are having an obligation that is saying, ah, hey, I need to make payment to, for something. And you, you having, the payment has to be made for, say, for example, 1,500. So you'll be begging the bank, ah, please, so I, just help me with this payment. Don't worry, we sort it out later. At that point in time, you are having an overdraft of 500 naira, which is likely to attract what? Interest. So at any point in time, both the bank overdrafts and the 500, uh, the, both the 500 and the interest accruing to the 500 and the interest accruing to this loan, they, uh, they all fall under your non-current liability. So we, that, that's why we always have interest on loan or interest on interest on loan generally, because gener the in as much as a loan has been given to you, a bank, that's what they do. That's a major cost of business. They, are, they give out money and they make sure they charge you well for it because that interest they are charging you with, that is their major source of income. So at any point in time, you go, a, a bank is allowing 500. Just know that that's attracted interest and you have to pay. 
So all this your non-correct liability that you met over a year, all of them, they have interest to accrue to them. So all of those interests that are there, everything that you're holding, you'll find everything under your non your non, your current liability. That's why we call them that we call them obligations that have to be met within a year. So in a nutshell, having having uh, the non-current and the current liability in mind, you should always have it at this at the at the back of your mind as well that all liabilities have a what they have a credit balance. So anything increasing it will be on the credit side, and anything reducing it will be on the debit side. So that still goes with your debit the giver and credit the uh, debit the receiver and credit the giver. Because whether you like it or yes, when you're incurring uh, when you're incurring liability, you are giving out me. It's not like it's even coming back to you. Though yeah, it's coming back in form of an asset. Because at that point in time, let me quickly rush you through uh, a transaction now so that you will be able to, you will be convinced more about debit the giver, uh, debit the receiver and credit the giver doctrine. Here, when we have a uh, receive 5,000 era loan in bank, Let's put it that way. What are we debiting? We are debiting our bank account, which is our asset, if you recall. And we are crediting our loan account, which is a what? A liability. I'm sure this has convinced you enough to know that when you debit, when you debit your bank, we have your debit here and your credit. The bank account, we, we say you received loan for how much? 5,000 Naira. That's why we are debiting this. It's making sense now. So you have your liability account. This is how your ledger account works. So you say, you're giving to a bank, a particular bank, 5,000 Naira. Does this make sense now? So at any point in time, you find out that at the point you're receiving it, you know, the bank is receiving it. That's why you're debiting the, the receiver and you're crediting what? The giver. Because at any point in time, the loan is the giver, whether they like it or not. So this is the doctrine behind it. And I would so much appreciate the fact that if we can have these five elements balance, uh, balances, side balances in our head, and we're going through all that means, you find that it's way easier to comprehend than just, uh, just, um, just cramming debit receiver, credit giver aspect of this whole thing. Because going forward, We'll be dealing with more complex, complicated part of our account than just debit the receiver and credit the giver. So, in a nutshell, for the ones I've actually explained, we have our assets. Our asset has a what? A debit balance. It, the liability has a what? It has a credit balance. Then your capital and other elements of capital as a what? They have a credit balance. At the end of the day, you find out that your, that is why you have your balance sheet like this, where you have your capital and your liability on the same side, while your assets take over the old side with no competitor. And I tell you, your balance sheet cannot be, cannot be termed as ledger. It is just a statement, a statement of financial position. So don't mix it up. But when you are dealing with every other item in the, your liability element of account, your capital element of account, they all have a what? A credit balances. But when you are dealing with your assets, you know they all have a debit balance. So at the end of the day, 
when you are dealing with, when we are talking about your statement of financial position, you always have them as financial position. Hello, is anyone there? Hope you can see my writings, everything. Can somebody signify, please? Yes, yes, we can see it. Okay, so that's why you have your statement of financial position to have on one side, having your capital and your liability, then your assets on the other side. So for everything that is increasing your assets will be debited. Anything that is increasing it will be debited. And everything that is reducing your capital will be your asset will be what will be debited. Anything that is decreasing your asset will be credited. So the vice versa, the same thing goes for your liability and your capital account. So let's quickly run through the income. And I'm sure this one explains a whole lot of things. So there won't be any mix up anyway. So when you're dealing with asset account, individual ledger, you have it as a debit balance. Anything increasing it will keep going to the debit and everything reducing it will keep going to the credits. That's why you have your cash account, your uh, two column cash book, uh, three column cash book. Everything that is coming into the account is debited. And everything that is reducing it is what is credited because you are making payment out. So the same thing applies to your liability and your capital. When those just mean as much as you get the concept of every item under each of these elements, you'll be fine. But your statement of financial position is a statement. It is not a ledger. Please don't mix it up. For every statement you have, for every statement you have your capital and your liability here and your assets here. That's because Liability and the capital share the same size of balances, while your assets share a different size of balances. So please don't mix it up. So let's deal with the other two elements of accounts. We don't forget so quickly the income and the expenses. Uh, you'll be surprised that by the time we'll be dealing with your trading profit and loss, we still have to go back a bit, back to what we are doing here in the ledger account so that we can, have, we can understand more. Then income, what are income? They are just revenue. They are revenue generated by the business. So quickly. Revenue generated by the business. So expenses are cost incurred to what? To generate this revenue. No, it's becoming more interesting. We could use a whole day. Like if you have to like sit and start doing this income, gener uh, income expenses, account and all of that. So income generated, they said the revenue generated by the business. Generated in the ordinary course of the business. Let me put it that way in the ordinary course of the business, in the ordinary course of the business. When we say generally in the ordinary course of the business, then we'll be looking at what is the business really into before we can decide this. Before we can say any revenue that is generated in the ordinary course of the business is an income, what does the business really do? If you are doing, if you are doing groceries, let's take for example, okay, let me say provision because I think that one is more general. So when we say provision, it means biscuits, sweets, um, pro, uh, milo, milk, sugar, all of these things you're selling are your income at any point in time. But in a situation whereby probably all these provisions, they come in cartons. Yes, we used to have situation whereby we have carton, carton. And probably you sell in piece, in, uh, in say dozens, in as much as it's not in bulk. Say after you buy uh, two cartons of biscuits, you have to sell it like say, people that comes to buy one dozen, half dozen, I want to buy one biscuit, I want to buy two biscuits like that, like that. So you have a lot of cartons 
outstanding. So you won't even know what to do with them. Then somebody walks up to you and say, ah, yeah, language, I like this, your, this cartons that, yeah, that is here. It's useful. Sell it for me now. Then by the, at the time you are now selling, at that time you are no longer selling provision because provision is your ordinary cost of business. What you, what you are now selling is carton and we call it scrap because the, the cartons from those biscuits, they are not your, they are not ordinary cost of the business. You did not buy carton so that you'll be selling carton, no. If somebody has come and buy the carton and the biscuit all together, you will not tell the person, yeah, the carton is, is separate. Though. You have to buy carton to know because they didn't sell carton for you where you were coming to. It was after, it was just because you had to open the biscuit and you had to sell one after the other, you hide up that you are left with the carton. So Kuma, instead of just living like that, you should just uh we should just give it to people that need it. You can easily just give it out like. Say, okay, just take it since you need it. Or you can just say, ah, no, you're not taking it for free. Bring something. No, the person at the end of the day gives you maybe 100 naira or 200. So that goes a long way to tell you that. It is not in the other records of your business. It is just scrap. You are just making scrap income. You are saying, we call it scrap disposal. In fact, we call it scrap disposal. In those cases, we call them order income. So please don't mix these things up. In those cases, we call them order income. And they are not expected. They are not expected in any form to keep occurring more than once or twice in a particular month, more than once or twice in a particular year, as the case may be. So that's your income for you. It has to be in, it has to be generated in the ordinary, please don't miss this part out, in the ordinary course of the business, because that's the basis of establishing the business in the first place. So every other thing is what we call other income. Maybe at the end of the day, I'm giving you example of examples of other income you might likely come across, but regardless of how it is, you don't get it mixed up. Then we have something we call, they call, they, they call it, well, it's still scrap, more of scrap disposal too, because in a situation whereby you have a fan, you have a fan you are using in your, in your, or in your shop or in your office, and you find out that the fan is not working well, you decided to buy another one. You know, just throwing this one out and allowing somebody to pick it up. You will just say, okay, somebody will say that, ah, you're not using this fan, give it to me now. Say, hey, no, I'm not giving it for free. They bring something. That one decides to give you maybe 1,000 air. So in as much as it is, you'll find out that it's still scrap. You're just scrapping those things off the business. So in a nutshell, without having to waste much of our time, this income in the ordinary course of the business and all that set of incomes that are likely to arise in the, in the running of the business, they all have a, they all have a word. They have a, um, how do I put it? They have a credit balance. So that's why you find out that when you open a ledger for your, when you open a ledger for your sales account, when you open a ledger for your sales account like this, debit and your credit here, your sales account, and your cash book, take for example, okay, let me rub this up. Then we'll come back to your expenses later. Okay, so you said cash sales for 2,000 Naira. So here, what you're debiting is your what? Your cash account. If you don't forget so easily, you find out your account, your cash account is your asset account. Now it's making sense, right? So your, you credit your what? Your sales account. And your sales account is your what? Your income account. And just like I've signified up here that every income account has a debit, has a credit balance. So in this call, in this case, you have your cash we, who is making the sales? Cash is making the sales at how much? 2,000 Naira. 
and who is receiving is becoming is begin is beginning to make more sense. So, sell cash is receiving how much two thousand naira. So, it's beginning to make more sense than why we are having a situation whereby uh, we are debiting the receiver and we are crediting the giver. And you see why it's more important to have all these elements of income, all these elements of account, side balances at head. Because at any point in time, you will still, you will need them. But the moment you get that concept, you won't be wondering, okay, who is receiving, who is giving? You will stop using that term, who is receiving, who is giving? The receiving part and the giving part will become more, will become more, as you, it will become more clearer to you. You'll be able to see, oh, really, this is why they do that. Wow, that's great. So you'll be able to explain to other people, when time you'll be going through your text, you'll be seeing so many things that will become so easy. You'll be like, wow, so really, this can really happen. That, wow, that is a great one. So, in as much as you can follow this doctrine, I tell you, you won't have issues with it. Because I tell you, when I was coming up, when I was doing account and I was doing account, it was a big complicated. I would just be like, oh my God. So who is debiting? Who is receiving? Who is giving now? But at a point in time, when I now sat down and I realized that these five elements of account, if you can get their sizes, the size of account which they have, you will be having issues with who is debiting and who is receiving, who is crediting and who is giving. You will just get this straight. This will be just so simple. Venue in order to generate revenue. you want to generate any revenue. The first thing you incur when you want to generate revenue at any point in time, as a business person, is purchases. You are going to buy. Whether you like it or not, you have to buy. If you don't buy, who is going to buy from you? You have to buy something first. Incur all that sort of, all that sort of uh, expenses, like carriage. I used to like put seats to people like I uh, was carriage 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 in what carriage outward is the same thing is the same expense like they are both expenses carriage in what like when you're bringing when you're bringing it in to your own premises carriage outward when you're taking it out there are certain situations that's just like just like my mom when she goes to the company where she gets her inventory she'll have to pay for her to get those goods out because she cannot use her head to carry it herself so those people she's paying, at that point in time, it is carriage outward. But at any point in time, by now, by the time she now starts incurring all these transports, like she has to incur costs to people that are actually bringing it in for her to her own very shop. Then she will start incurring carriage inward. So whether you like it or not, those things are still very necessary. Then we look at other things, other expenses you incur to sell her, to generate revenue, because these things, they will not just happen on their own. Sometimes you need to do what we call selling expenses slash advertisement. And when we mean selling expenses slash advertisement, sometimes you need to tell, make awareness, like, ah, this is what I'm doing, oh, this is what I'm selling, this is what I'm uh, clinical. Like you want people to come and buy all those things, those expenses you incur in the process, are what we call your selling expenses. They are vast, seriously, they are really, really vast. I can't really list everything that would, everything that would tell us this is what our expenses is from at any point in time. But in, in a nutshell, we call every, every other thing a what? A sundry expenses. It's not that they are going to incur those expenses. A sundry expenses can be electricity, it could be, it could be water, we call it utilities. 
It could be anything because at the time, at a point in time, by the time you'll be able to classify in between all of these things, you will be able to tell yourself, okay, wow, wow, this is why it is like this. This is why it's like this. But just, I beg you guys, please just understand this concept. You will find every other thing very easy. In fact, it will be so easy going that when you, when you see your cash book, I tell you by the end of this class, when you check this, by the time you are through with this class, you should be able to go to your cash book and, come, and, be, and, 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 and you should be able to go to your cash book and solve a cash book question. You will solve a cash book question and you'll be amazed that really so I can do this? Yes, you can, because it goes a long way. Another part of the, this thing I've not even, I've not, I didn't specify is what we call discount allowed. So when you say discount allowed, what does discount allowed mean? You mean after this, after you purchase somehow, maybe you buy on credit. So when you buy, it's usually a credit, it's usually relates to a credit transaction. So maybe you buy on credit. And all of a sudden, the person bought, you bought something worth of 5,000. So the person was just like, shall I pay me my money? The money is even taking too long. He was just like, okay, shall I bring 4,500? You know, at that point in time, you've been allowed 500. That shall I take 500? Now that 500 naira is what? Is credit, uh, is discount allowed. And I tell you, it's related to you. Don't mix it up. Oh. When it is you that is incurring it, it is discount allowed. But when it is you getting it from somebody else, I shall bring my shall bring my money. It is discount received because at any point in time, in your books, when you recognize the person as your debtor, the moment the person is recognized as your debtor, your debtor's account, you said you are the, the person is owing you five point five thousand euro. After the while, have become too much. So you shall bring five, four thousand five hundred. Sure, you know you are, the, you are receiving cash for four thousand five hundred. So it means your 500 Naira should be expensed off. That's why you have it as discount allowed. But in a situation where it's you that is owing somebody money, the person becomes your creditor at any point in time because after you make purchases and you're not making payments, the person becomes your creditor. Then you are owing 5,000 Naira. And all of a sudden, the person was like, shall I bring for 4,500? At that point in time, you are receiving a discount, which is also an income, but it is not in the ordinary course of being, the ordinary course of the business. That is why we call it order income. Now I'm very sure that all of these things will begin to make sense to you that oh really this is why all these things are like this because I tell you account is the same place and it's just standard. It's just the way. It's just the way it is. You cannot. It's not rocket science like I used to say. It's very simple. Get the concept, work with it, flow with it. You'll be fine in any situation, in any scenario you find yourself. In as much as we all have these five elements of account balance. Oh, sorry, subhanAllah. So I didn't explain that your expenses account as a what? A debit balance. Please, let's have that in mind. It's very, very important. Your expenses account as a what? A debit balance. Paid electricity for cash. For cash, how much? Let's say 500 naira. And I'll demonstrate why that, that crane works now. So here we have electricity. We have the electricity account and we have the cash account credit debit credit debit so you find out that here the and i just like i said your expenses as a debit balance who is receiving it the electricity is receiving 500 that's why it has a debit balance and who is giving it out at any point in time because cash is not receiving it is giving out that is why we are crediting cash with electricity and remember, clearly I said, any if it, cash account is an asset, sorry, cash account is an asset. So if cash is, if you are debiting cash, which turns out to be an asset, 
anything increasing it will be on the debit side and anything reducing it will be on the credit side sorry you're crediting cash now so you're debiting electricity in this case because electricity on a, like the, like i've explained earlier here is a debit is an expenses and expenses as a credit as a debit balance so you notice vividly here that we have the cash credited and the electricity debited because all expenses account as the debit balance. The debit, the cash account, the cash account is an asset account, and anything that is increasing it will be debited, and anything reducing the cash account will be credited because cash is not receiving, it is making payment. So in a nutshell, I think we need to really wrap this up so we won't be left halfway along everything. So we have our elements of account to be our income, our expenses. We have the capital. We have the assets. And we have the liabilities. Please, all these things in mind. Your asset, your income account, like I explained earlier, has a credit balance. Please, when they say something has a credit balance, what does it mean? It means that anything increasing that has an increasing this item of account is credited, and anything reduced, reducing it is what debited. The same goes for your expenses. It has your debit balance. Anything increasing the asset expenses is debited and anything reducing it is credited. Your capital has a credit balance. The same doctrine has applied. Anything increasing it is credited and anything reducing it is debited. So your asset, your asset has a debit, your asset has a credit your debit a debit balance I, I need to correct something on my for earlier explanation on drawings please i don't want anyone to get to to mix it up please 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 drawings is withdrawing from this thing so is, is it has a debit balance on its own that's why you find out that in your balance sheet you always have your capital like this and you have drawings they will now put it in brackets minus please don't mix it up. I just, I think I need to correct that so quickly. So it's reducing, drawings reduces your capital. So that's why you always have it, it's reducing capital. So that's why you always have it as a debit balance. Even your trial balance is in a debit balance. I'm so sorry for the mix up. I'm so, so sorry, please. Just note that. Then your liability, because at if any point in time, if your capital is as a credit balance, anything reducing your capital will be debited. So that's why you find out that your drawings is always reducing your capital. And it's, for, it's, even, it's even commonsensical. Like you know that you're bringing in 5,000 at any point in time. And then at the end of the day, you say that, then let me quickly borrow 500 in It's not reducing, it's not increasing it at the same time. It's reducing it drastically. So that's why you have your drawings to be your what? To be a debit balance. So your liability as well uh, as a what? as a credit balance please 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 students if you can work with this i tell you you won't have an issue with ledger account when you are given questions as to cash sales you already know your uh, your cash sales is telling you you're making sales in cash what is cash cash is an asset what is sales sales is an income you debit your you credit your income account because it's received, you're, it's, you are increasing your income account. Then you debit your asset account, your cash account, because it is increasing your asset account. Then if you are given a situation whereby you are saying made paid motor expenses by check, what are we making payment for? Expenses, motto expenses, which falls under expenses. You debit your motor expenses account and you credit your asset account by cash for whatsoever amount that is given. So it's so easy, it's so straightforward, like you can easily see these things. Now going forward 
in our next class after uh, after we since we understood i presume we all understood this and by the time you'll be going through more questions you will get more in in the insight to what each of these things really entail and i please and please i don't want you to mix this up if any of these five elements of account has a particular balance quite know quite well that your whatsoever balance is old anything that will be increasing that item of account will be on that balance but anything that will be reducing it will be on the other side of the ledger account please don't make this up assets anything increasing it will be what debited and anything reducing it will be credited liability anything increasing liability will be de credited and anything reducing it will be debited the same thing goes for your capital anything increasing your capital will be credited and anything reducing it will be what debited take for example your drawings that's why it has a debit balance so your expenses anything increasing your expenses will be debited in a nutshell and anything reducing it will be credited. So the same thing goes for your income account. Anything increasing your income account will be credited and anything reducing it will be what? Debited. So I believe we should be able to work with this, go through some other rough questions to do this exercise, uh, to, to practice more of this, more exercises on these items of account. It will beginning to make more sense, but because the class is really short, we just have to make it short. Open st students can actually go back, look at what we've taught, look at what we've explained in a very short form, apply it, read in depth, and they will just grab everything that like every logic behind it. So that's what we'll be having for our ledger account today. I hope we really understand. I don't want things to be the, like the last time. But going uh, in the next class, I'll see if we could do a surgery a, a full question on the ledger account before we move on so thank you very much <laughs>